congregation loves this school. They feel it's a vital part of the ministry of Good Shepherds. Uh, and they are, are very supportive of the school. Recommendation that we make in this area is even though you have uh, a number of things, a number of ways that your students participate um, in the church uh, and so on, always look for more ways that you can um, so that the students can participate. It's like they're giving back to the congregation, but it also is good for the congregation to see see the students and what they're they're doing within the church. Standard three is the relationship with the home. This uh, this standard here talks about the relationship of the school to the home, and one of the things we want to commend you for was for the excellent communication processes that you have in 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 place. Not only do you send the information home to the students through the folders, but uh, also the other information that you give out at the parent meetings. Uh, and your website is also a great source of information. It really is very, very, very good website. And it has a lot of information about the school and about everything that's going on in the school. So your communication skills with the, uh, getting information back home and back to the parents are to be commended. And because of that, we have no recommendations in this area. <laughs> I have the uh, next standard, standard for the school's relationship with students. One of the, I think, the most valuable indicators we saw, <coughs> artifacts we saw, was a survey from your, of your parents in regard to their thoughts about your work with their children. It's always, always a very touchy topic, isn't it? This is my child. This is an extension of me. And the parents said a lot of good things about you. And in interviews and in observations, that was also the case. A commendation we have here is that the parents know that you, all of you, pastors, staff members, teachers, care about their children. And that's one of the most beautiful things a fellow Christian can say about a Christian teacher or a Christian pastor or a Christian school staff, and that is something to thank God for. We did not have, based on our interviews and our observations, uh, any recommendations for you in this area. Standard five, uh, relationship with the community. You have a very unique setup here with your child, where the child care is located. Now, I know it's been located there for years, uh, but what we want to commend you for is whether you realize it or not, that child care is very important. As we came together as team members and debriefed about our, our many conversations with the students that we had, one of the questions we asked the students were, was, how long have you been here? And the majority of our students that we talked to told us that they were here since the childcare, and then they came into the school. Uh, one child I interviewed was really pretty funny. He thought about it, and then he said, I can't figure out how many years, but I've been here since I've been one. So, <laughs> but we, you know, so that led us to, to commend the child care, the importance of the child care that is to the school ministry, that it seamlessly feeds into the school. Do you get everybody? No. Would you like to get everybody? You probably would like to get everybody. But where the child care is located, uh, and how it's connected to the school, how it actually gives uh, um, Mr. Henning a chance to talk to child care families, how the child care parents can actually see down the hall 
and see the 4K and the 5K rooms uh, and that I, I, I just wanted to let you know that that is, uh, the child care is very important and significant in this whole ministry. Uh, recommendations, uh, we are encouraging uh, the, the faculty as much as possible to get involved in the community uh, and, and, and encourage the students and the families to get involved in the community. West Dallas, even though it is a, a larger, if you want to call it a larger city, it is a smaller community in the whole scheme of the metro Milwaukee area. And the more that you can get involved in that or get the main um, Good Shepherds involved in that, the better. Uh, I also had the opportunity to, I guess my teammates uh, nominated me to uh, report on 6 and 7. Uh, uh, actually, 6 and 7 is pretty easy to report on. Uh, the recommendation went to the wells. Um, we looked at this, uh, the relationship with the wells. You use, uh, you support the wells, you, you get your teachers through the wells, uh, you use documents. We have no commendations or recommendations in this area. And as far as enrolling students, uh, again, there are no commendations or recommendations that we've made in this area. That brings us then to climate. School climate is more than, did we have a good day today? It's, it's extended quite a bit further than just how did things go today. And it it's has multiple facets as well. What is obvious is that, thanks be to God, Good Shepherds has what appears to be, to, to all of us anyway, as visitors coming in, a very positive climate. The children seemed happy. They seemed happy to be with teachers, talking to teachers. From everything we gleaned from interviews and observations, parents and teachers seem to have a good relationship, a good rapport. From everything we glean from our observations and interviews, that seemed to be the case across the entire uh, Good Shepherd team, regardless of, of what their role actually was. And obviously there will be bumps in every road. We're <coughs> all sinners. I think people at Good Shepherd be sinners too. I don't think we specifically saw anything there, but uh, as part of what we did see, it was obvious there was a positive climate here. School, I'd like to report on school governance and administration. Uh, this looks at both the Board of Ed and it looks at uh, the, the principal and how the school is running, the policies that are developed. This is actually the largest standard in all of the accreditation for rightfully so because the school would not run without the policies that are made so there's a lot of policies to look through uh, and that. A uh, couple commendations uh, we want to highlight here is first the uh, uh, Good Shepherds is blessed with a principal who demonstrates uh, Christian leadership. Christian leadership um, First and foremost, in the morning, uh, creating a setting here with the faculty devotions, uh, Christian leadership uh, as he teaches the students, Christian leadership um, in the hallways, Christian leadership as he's greeting people, Christian leadership as he's talking on the phone. Um, and uh, we, from our observation, we just, and as outsiders, we wanted to again commend your principal for his Christian leadership. And to help him do that, uh, Good Shepherds has been blessed for years with uh, fantastic sec secretary support. Um, uh, Lori, uh, you are, if I could snatch you away, I, would. <laughs> I think I'd have an enemy of all of Good Shepherds. So if I did that. No. Uh, Secretaries sometimes do a lot of the work behind the scenes, but actually they're the first people that many people see in a school. And I, 
I am a firm believer, um, and I'm sure all of our team members that have been principals will say that too, that, that without a good secretary, a good school cannot function. Um, so um, thank you for all that you do here and do. And we just didn't put that because of the food. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, under recommendations, uh, under the, this area of uh, administration, uh, the Board of Ed has worked diligently uh, over the past years creating policies and procedures, putting things in policy handbooks, uh, creating job descriptions and that. Um, our recommendation in this area is don't forget to review and update. Don't forget to review, uh, and from time to time, review your policy handbook. Just to make sure, do we still even need these policies? <coughs> Are we utilizing these policies and procedures? If not, take them out. Um, so the policies don't get old with time or aren't utilized. And it also helps the, the administration and the board refresh themselves on what the policy is. Another thing is with the job descriptions that you've created. It's good to review and update the job descriptions that have been created for the principal, the athletic director, the teachers, or whatever position that it is, and update those Eliminate things that aren't being aren't needed anymore, and updating that are more actively done. I'm sorry, you're seeing so much of me. <laughs> I apologize. Jeff and I were classmates, and for whatever reason, he thought he was appropriate. I get twice as many standards. <laughs> Not quite that bad. I'm kidding. Commendations, strong <coughs> Christian examples from uh, the workers here at Good Shepherd, the faculty, the staff, the pastors. There's a lot of uh, living for Christ that's evident to us, anyway, in, in these last three days. Students seem to respond well to your work, and they said things like that, that were very positive and it's appropriate to share those with you, but it's also important to remember that this is the sort of gift that God and God alone can give. And you have a good Christian example from, from your people. There is also a really positive student-teacher ratio, although in some of your rooms they're quite close. Um, nonetheless, it's obvious the board has tried and the administration has tried, for example, in the first and second grade room to split the grades in the afternoon to have an aid in that classroom for part of the day. Those were very beneficial things and should be noted as such. So it is, it is accurate to say that there is a good student-teacher ratio here. Recommendations, it would be good better than good for all of your faculty and staff to finish up their state certifications. I know that uh, in two cases we're looking at retirement soon, tear drum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the board should probably, and we can't, we're not giving you an order, obviously, we're making a recommendation here, but uh, with new faculty it might be wise to put into the call letter or in early conversations the desire to have state certification within a certain amount of time. Also, it would be good um, for the board to regularly assess not just policies, but as part of the overall operation, extra duties that faculty and staff might have. No one complained. No one said, oh, woe is me, I'm really being dumped on, and no one cares about me, and that sort of thing. But this is something that in many schools is a source of friction. Why do I have a bazillion extra duties and so-and-so has one? Uh, that ain't fair. Well, we didn't hear that at all. We heard nothing like that at all. But this is always something that the board should be aware of, cognizant of, 
and do everything they can to regularly make sure that the extracurricular duties are spread around as much as humanly possible. We don't live in a fair world. That's the reality of sin. But um, it does not appear from what we saw and what we interviewed that this is an issue, but the potential is there. So just something to be aware of. I spent most of the last few days reviewing your curriculum and instruction practices. Um, one thing that impressed me was the fact that you included your mission statement on each one of your written curriculums to show that that mission statement is why you do what you do here at Good Shepherds. And I've done several of these visits. I have never seen it before. And that was something that really impressed me. Also, in the written philosophy for each subject area, you clearly showed how each subject is taught in the light of God's word, which is part of your mission and vision statements, and uh, something that I thought was really impressive. Uh, the only recommendation in the curriculum area is to add those health standards, either into your science curriculum or your physical education curriculum. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. Right. And in the area instruction, uh, the commendation there is the professional development commitment that your faculty and staff has. Um, to, to see the list of you know, how many credit hours that uh, each of the teachers have gone to like for workshops and teachers' conferences and that was, uh, was very impressive. Again, like I said, I've done a lot of these visits and there are some schools out there where you know, they go to the the state teachers conference in the fall and they go to whatever spring conference their district has and that's about it. Um, so uh, obviously it's something that's important to you to stay current, to keep up with what's the latest and greatest out there. And the only recommendation that I have here is uh, the map testing and you know the fact that we can get those results so quickly after the students take that test to really review those results and to use them in driving your instruction with your students. Standard 13 is uh, student services, all the various different stu uh, services that are going on at the school that affect the children. And uh, we want to commend you for your crisis management plan. It is extremely well written, detailed, and I know that you have practiced that as well. So. Uh, in the, in the world we live in today, the, the unfortunate situations that are going on in schools all over the country, you've got to be prepared and uh, if everybody follows that crisis management plan, you really have, have done as good a job in preparing for whatever might you know, happen uh, with, with that plan. So that, that was very good. Our recommendations, you have several different opportunities for the students and quite a bit in the area of athletics. It's a good idea to look for some other types of things in the academic area that some of the other students who might not be gifted as athletically or don't want to participate athletically can do. And a, a couple of examples of that are, might be as simple as having something like a chess club at the school or uh, having a, a, little, a look a little bit more in the area of academics where they might be able to do something or robotics is a big thing now. And I know a lot of kids uh, at schools are looking into robotics. So I, I don't know what the, uh, it might look like, what the students might want, but just look at some other academic areas as a possible way to get some other students more involved in some of the things that are going on at, at Good Shepherds. sound rather weird here, a Christian facility. We're not implying this is a living building and it has a soul, but uh, this is a building that nonetheless is obviously marked by Christianity, not just in behavior and in speech, but in wall murals, decorations, uh, posters, and that's a very positive thing because that's part of being a light in the world. That's part of uh, being a witness 
as we have opportunity, people driving by can know this is a Christian organization on as they go by the freeway and hopefully don't get in a car accident as they take their eyes off the road. But uh, that's what we mean by Christian facility, not implying that the building itself has a soul, but the people in it do, and they want very much to share that Christian message with the world. The recommendation here, and please, please, please uh, understand what we're saying. We are not saying get a new facility, so don't go and say at the next council meeting, well, they told us to get it. No, we are not. But we are encouraging <coughs> you to consider a new facility in whatever long-range plans you are working on. At some point, and you guys are doing a great job with maintenance and taking care of things, but at some point, a building... Uh, reaches its life expectancy as well. And you could easily put a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars into maintenance, I would think, very easily here. Maybe more. I don't know what your wish list entirely is. But at some point in a cost-benefit analysis of that, it may be appropriate to consider is this building at its life expectancy end. And is it time to consider uh, a building that's maybe on one level, you've not so many stairs, better air conditioning heating systems, updated electrical plumbing, Mike was <coughs> mopping up sewage our first day here. Um, you know, you know, we're not no, uh, it makes an impression, you know, on visitors, I guess, is part of that. And, and kudos to all of you because it's obvious this is a cared for facility. It has not been left to wreck and ruin. You have done a lot of work, and that is to be commended, and God be thanked for that. But at some point, there is, there is a cost-benefit analysis on how much can we put into a building that's already X number of years old, and would we be better off starting to put that money into something, I don't want to say more modern for the sake of more modern, but easier to maintain, um, whatnot. It's a conversation you and God are going to have to have in our opinion. So, Patty, don't go saying, Freezy said we got to get a new building. I'm not saying that. And the final standard is uh, standard 15 on information management. Uh, you have an excellent data backup. And, you know, data is great, isn't it? Except when you don't have it. And how many times data gets corrupted or, or, we, or we lose it. So, uh, you have a very good data backup system where... All the files are taken care of and they're stored off-site and that's that's wonderful so you are going to be able to recover any of that in case anything happened and the recommendation goes right with that you've got all your student data backed up but you don't have the faculty on electronic data yet so uh, it's it's a process of going through and taking pictures and scanning of the documents that are in the faculty files right now but get to get those on a uh, electronic system as well so that they're available and then they can go on that wonderful backup and you'll have that information all the time whenever it's needed. It brings us to the conclusion of, of our meeting here. Uh, what we shared with you uh, were a portion of the combinations and the recommendations. Uh, you will be getting the complete report soon um, where that you can look at look at the complete report uh, you can actually see specifically how the team rated each each of the standard items whether they were either partially met fully met not met and our recommendations in there uh, for that uh, this is actually people schools that have gone through this 
more than once, sometimes they zone out because this is really what they want to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we, as a, a accrediting team, are going to be taken back to the Commission on Lutheran Schools that we are recommending you for exemplary accreditation. Uh, and as I shared with Pastor and Mike this afternoon, uh, from our rating, uh, you received 99% of the, the accreditation standards, uh, uh, four points for the accreditation standards, I guess is the best way to put it. Outstanding work. Um, the, the team members and I just want to say that this is an outstanding school. Um, is it a perfect school? No. Uh, I don't think if we have a perfect school, I guess I would want to see one. Um, a school is a school is made up of people. It's made up of, of, of faculty, staff, pastors, and students with their families. You've got an outstanding school. Do you have some? things you need to work toward and work on in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I believe you have the the, uh, the board leadership uh, you know, that are looking at these things. How can we make this school even better than what it is? Um, this, this is a very good school. Uh, it, I would, I would highly recommend it to anybody that I know that is living in this approximate area to check out. Um, and I won't say that about every school, but I would tell them to check it out. You know, this got a great, great school here, great loving, caring teachers who come here. So we're very, very happy to uh, make that recommendation to the Commission on Lutheran Schools. Uh, in that, uh, I would like to just uh, say a closing prayer as Dear God, Heavenly Father, um, you have blessed Good Shepherds with the privilege of having a, a Lutheran school here for almost a hundred years. Thank you for, for giving them that privilege and thank you for giving them the teachers that touch souls here in the West Dallas area. <coughs> Please continue to, to give the uh, pastors and teachers and staff and board members the, the passion to continue to spread the gospel and have a, a solid education here. Not just cr the Christian education, but also education that uh, gets students ready for the the world that they live in. Continue to bless, uh, bless them. Uh, also, thank you uh, for the hospitality that the team has received during these past days. And we ask you, Lord, that you would guide and protect all of us uh, on our travels home and protect us through the evening so we can come back the next day to serve you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, thank you very much for for everything that you did to uh, make our lives.